today is Wednesday, January the 19th, and it's good to be on again today. It's good to wake up another morning. Thankful for that. Had a good night's rest last night. I hope you did too. Um, tonight is our Wednesday night Bible studies here on campus. The ladies are doing a study through the book of James, and I would encourage any ladies so. Uh, to come and attend and be a part of that. That's tonight at 6 p.m. And uh, the men are meeting in the modular. We're doing a study through First and Second Timothy. So I encourage you all to be here. I think uh, the children will be in the sanctuary tonight um, rehearsing for our Next Generation service this coming Sunday. And we're looking forward to that, just to celebrate God's grace here and that he has brought together multiple generations and as a part of the body of Christ and we need each other. And so I encourage you to make plans to be here uh, tonight for our Bible studies or Sunday morning for our Next Generation service at 10 a.m. A couple of prayer updates I want to bring to you. We uh, was able to be there with Vanessa yesterday. She came out from her final chemo treatment and she rang the bell and it was a special time. And so we want to continue to pray for Vanessa. She has her surgery coming up February the 3rd. And then radiation treatment uh, will continue after her surgery. And so be praying for Vanessa. Today, Barbara Ramsdale is, is having surgery, her cancer surgery today. So be praying for Barbara. And yesterday, James Wiseman had surgery in the afternoon. And the last update I got was that, that it seemed to have gone well. And that's about all I know right now. So be praying for James and, and Wanda. And then... Uh, uh, prayer request, uh, Jim McLeod, many of you know Jim, he went home to be with the Lord yesterday afternoon and should be praying for Sally. Um, she's lost her her husband. Jim fought a, fought a hard battle. I think Jim was 80 years old and uh, so just be, be praying for Sally and we as a body just mourn his passing but thankful that we know where he is and that he is now seeing the realization of his salvation with Jesus. And so keep those requests uh, in mind. Pray for um, Joan and Ken Moss as they're continuing to, to deal with difficulties in their situation and so many others. And so make me aware of any prayer needs we have, if you will, on the post. So this morning, we're continuing John chapter 14 and uh, really one verse, I think, is the big idea of the verse. And so this song came to mind. It's called Peace in the Valley. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go alone till the Lord comes and calls me away. Well, the morning's so bright and the Lamb is the light and the night, the night is as fair as a day and there will be peace in the valley for me someday and there will be peace in the valley for me oh lord i pray there'll be no sadness no sorrow no trouble there will be peace, peace in the valley for me. Well, the flowers will be blooming and the grass will be green and the skies will be as clear and serene where the sun ever be valley of dreams and no clouds will ever be seen up there and there will be peace in the valley for me someday and there will be peace in the valley for me oh lord i pray sadness, no sorrow, trouble will I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. Well, the bear will be gentle and the wolves will be tame and the lion, he 
shall lay down with the lamb and the beast from the wild shall be led by a child and I'll be changed changed from this creature that I am sing it with me there'll be peace there'll be peace in the valley Someday there will be peace in the valley for me, O oh Lord, I pray. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble, I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. There will be peace. There will be peace in the valley for me, O oh Lord, I pray. There will be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble I see. There will be peace, peace in the valley. There will be peace in the valley. I was thinking of the verse that we're going to particularly look at this morning, and and I was just thankful that that God has made made it made a way for me to have peace with Him, and not only the peace in my relationship with Him, um, but the peace that only He can bring. And that's really the the big idea of what Jesus is speaking of here. In this latter part of chapter 14, I'm just going to read the rest of this chapter beginning in verse 18 and come back and make some comments in particular uh, surrounding verse 27 of this passage. Uh, Jesus is beginning to tell his disciples that he's going to be leaving them. They're not fully aware of what he's talking about, but he's giving them the promise that as he leaves, he's gone to prepare a place for them. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And um, the the big picture of what Jesus is looking at is is the fact that that life on this earth is temporal, um, and he's going to leave, but not to be alarmed. He's going to send one, the Holy Spirit, to not only be with believers, those who place their trust in him, but also to be in them. He calls him the, the helper, the paraclete, the one who comes alongside. He speaks of him as being the spirit of truth. Later, he's going to talk about the Holy Spirit being the one that leads us into all truth. But he begins in verse 18 and says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. And here's the promise that as Jesus was leaving, he's not going to leave his disciples abandoned, but, but he will come to us. And what he's again speaking of is the Holy Spirit that he would send to dwell in us. He said, yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. Now, he wasn't speaking physically of them seeing him, but spiritually they would see him. Although he's going to leave, the world is not going to see him. Those he's speaking of in the world, those who would have not or would not place their trust in him, but those who are believers will see him. There'll be evidence of him in their lives every single day, and that's going to be through the Holy Spirit of God. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him, make myself known to him in a continuing basis, and not just in the sense of, of a cognitive remembrance, but a knowing of him. He will make himself known to us every moment of every single day. Verse 22, Judas, not Judas, uh, Judas, not Judas Iscariot, the other disciples said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now, here's a big question. And Jesus is going to make a distinction here in the following verses in this chapter of how he will make himself manifest, continually known to those who are 
followers of his who have trusted him in salvation, but yet not to those of the world, those who have not accepted Christ. And so Jesus answered him and said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Very important there. Make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Verse 25, these things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. So, here Jesus is speaking to them, tell them again, he's going to be leaving, but the Father is going to send the Holy Spirit. We said yesterday, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three very distinct, different persons, however, one, and he's already explained this, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father, and the Holy Spirit is God as well. So God's not going to leave us alone, but he's going to give us the Holy Spirit of God. And then he says in verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, I do not give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Then he says in verse 28, You have heard me say, I am going away, but I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, but I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now that I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. But he has no claim on me that the world may know that I love the Father, Rise, let us go from here. So here Jesus uh, speaks of him going away. He was making reference to the cross. We know he had raised from the dead, but he would ascend to the Father. But he, the Father was going to send one. That's the Holy Spirit. Now the key in this whole passage is verse 27, that Jesus leaves peace with them, my peace I give to you. He makes a contrast, not as the world gives, uh, but is peace for me. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The Bible speaks of man in his relationship to God as, as man being enemies of God. Paul explains this in Romans chapter 8. He says, not that God made us his enemies, but we made ourselves, we made God our enemies by rejecting God. So there's this, this enmity, there's this strife between fallen man, sinful man, and God. And, and it's not that God has cast us aside and made us his enemy. The Bible says that we have made God our enemy. The beautiful thing that happens when we trust Christ is that that enmity, that, that conflict that we have between God because we are sinners is now made whole and there's peace that we have with God through Christ Jesus. The Bible speaks of peace in three different primary ways. There, there's a peace that comes from God uh, and, and, and peace not, not as the world has. You see, the world kind of has a pseudo peace. Um, just kind of the absence of strife, but there's always enmity in the world. There's always strife in the world because of sin. But there's a peace that comes from God that, that only God can give. But the second key component of peace is not only that there's a peace from God, but there's a peace with God. And Jesus, when he says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, he's speaking of that peace in a spiritual sense that we now have peace with God. And the result of having peace with God is then we begin to experience the peace of God. Jesus is going to later speak of this peace in John chapter 16, verse 33, when he says, I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace in the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. You know, before I was saved, I, I looked for this sense of peace, this, this serenity, if you will, this settledness in so many different other ways. And it wasn't until I came to know Christ that I really sensed what true peace is. 
And yes, I still live in this world and you live in this world and, and, and all around us is strife everywhere. It's, it's not worse today than it's ever been. It's always been this way from the fall in the garden. Um, there's always been this strife. That's a result and a consequence of sin. And man is looking for peace in so many different ways. But we find that that kind of peace that we that we think is going to give us peace, maybe it's a... Maybe it's uh, 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 the, the mate of our life. Maybe it's the, the car that we've always dreamed of. Maybe it's the house, if we could only have this house. Or maybe it's this job that if I had, it would settle all of that for me. But all of those things are fleeting. Um, they, they come and they go, and they don't give that deep, satisfying peace that can only come from God. And when we come into relationship with God through Christ, we experience that peace. But I found in the Christian life that there are times that I, that I still seek after or I look for peace in other ways. But I always seem to come up short because there's nothing that can settle my heart like resting in the peace that I have with God through Christ Jesus. And so I want to encourage you this morning that, that if you're looking for peace in any other way, if you're looking for uh, for peace through anything that may come from the world, it will not give peace and contentment of heart. Only resting in the peace that we have in God through Christ Jesus can give us that solace. So today, rest in Him. Rest in His peace. Spend some time after this devotion this morning thanking God for the peace that He has brought to you through your relationship in Christ. Thank God for the peace that you have today no matter if you were saved 50 years ago, but when you rest in Him, you have a peace. Thank God for the eternity that He has for us. He's laid up for us when we will spend that eternity with Him in fullness of relationship with Him. You see, that's the kind of peace that the world cannot give. It may offer it, but it's a false peace. Pray today that God gives you an opportunity to share Christ with somebody, to plant a seed of the gospel so that they too can have peace with God. Pray that if we recognize that someone has already had a seed planted in their heart, that God would give us the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed. And oh, if God by his grace would allow us to watch somebody, see somebody, experience somebody come into knowledge in Christ, man, that would be so great. So pray. Ask God to use you today in whatever way he wants to use you to demonstrate his love, his grace, and his peace to somebody else. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Look forward to seeing those that are making plans to be here tonight as we engage in discipleship in the body of Christ. I love you and I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Have a great day.